Ukrainian nationalism refers to the Ukrainian version of nationalism. Although the current Ukrainian state emerged fairly recently, some historians, such as Mikhailo Ryshevsky, Orest Subtelny and Paul Magashi, have cited the medieval state of Kievan Rus as an early precedent of specifically Ukrainian statehood. The origins of modern Ukrainian nationalism have also been traced to the 17th-century Cossack uprising against the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, led by Bodin Komelnitsky. Cossack nationalism The Cossacks played a role in reawakening a Ukrainian sense of identity within the steppe region. A dominant figure within the Cossack movement and in Ukrainian nationalist history, Bodin Komelnitsky c. 1595-1657, commanded the Zaporozhian Cossacks and led the Komelnitsky uprising against Polish rule in the mid-17th century. Komelnitsky also succeeded in legitimizing a form of democracy which had been practiced by Cossacks since the 15th century. This sense of democracy played a key part of the sense of ethnic identity. Bodin Komelnitsky spoke of the liberation of the entire Ruthenian people, and recent research has confirmed that the concept of a Ruthenian nation as a religious and cultural community had existed before his revolution. Modern Ukrainians still remember and glorify Komelnitsky's role in the history of Ukraine. Another prominent figure in Cossack nationalism, Hetman Ivan Mazepa (1639–1709), made large financial contributions focused on the restoration of Ukrainian culture and history during the early 18th century. He financed major reconstructions of the Saint Sophia Cathedral in Kiev and the elevation the Kiev Mohyla Collegium to the status of Kiev Mohyla Academy in 1694. Politically, however, Mazepa was misunderstood and misrepresented, and found little support among the peasantry. <laughs> <laughs> Ukrainian nationalism in literature One of the most prominent figures in Ukrainian national history, the Ukrainian poet Taras Shevchenko, voiced ideas of an independent and sovereign Ukraine in the 19th century. Taras Shevchenko used poetry to inspire cultural revival to the Ukrainian people and to strive to overthrow injustice. Shevchenko died in St. Petersburg on March 10, 1861, the day after his 47th birthday. Ukrainians, not only the citizens of Ukraine, but Ukrainians who live throughout the world, regard him as a national hero. His collection of poetry Kobzer was the second book in almost every Ukrainian household in the beginning of 20th century after the Bible. He became a symbol of the national cultural revival of Ukraine. Besides Shevchenko numerous other poets have written in Ukrainian. Among them, Volodymyr Sosyura in his poem Love Ukraine 1944 stated that one cannot respect other nations without respect for one's own. <inaudible> <inaudible> Ukrainian nationalism in the 20th century <inaudible> World War I With the collapse of the Russian Empire a political entity which encompassed political, community, cultural, and professional organizations was established in Kiev from the initiative from the Association of the Ukrainian Progressionists This entity was called the Central Narada Central Council and was headed by the historian, Mikhailo Hrushevsky. On January 22, 1918, the Central Narada declared Ukraine an independent country. This independence was recognized by the Russian government headed by Lenin, as well as the Central Powers and other states. However, this government did not survive very long because of pressures not only from Denikin's Russian White Guard, but also the Red Army, German and Entente intervention, and local anarchists such as Nestor Makhno and Green Army of Ottoman Zelini. Topic: <laughs> Interwar period in Soviet Ukraine. As Bolshevik rule took hold in Ukraine, the early Soviet government had its own reasons to encourage the national movements of the former Russian Empire. Until the early 1930s, Ukrainian culture enjoyed a widespread revival due to Bolshevik concessions known as the policy of Indigenization. 
In these years an impressive Ukrainization program was implemented throughout the Republic. In such conditions, the Ukrainian national idea initially continued to develop and even spread to a large territory with traditionally mixed population in the East and South that became part of the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. At the same time, despite the ongoing Soviet-wide anti-religious campaign, the Ukrainian National Orthodox Church was created, the Ukrainian Autocephalous Orthodox Church. The church was initially seen by the Bolshevik government as a tool in their goal to suppress the Russian Orthodox Church, always viewed with great suspicion by the regime for its being the cornerstone of the defunct Russian Empire and the initially strong opposition it took towards the regime change. Therefore, the government tolerated the new Ukrainian National Church for some time and the UAOC gained a wide following among the Ukrainian peasantry. These events greatly raised the national consciousness among the Ukrainians and brought about the development of a new generation of Ukrainian cultural and political elite. This in turn raised the concerns of Joseph Stalin, who saw danger in the Ukrainians' loyalty towards their nation competing with their loyalty to the Soviet state and in early 1930s the Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was declared to be the primary problem in Ukraine. The Ukrainization policies were abruptly and bloodily reversed, most of the Ukrainian cultural and political elite was arrested and executed, and the nation was decimated with the famine called the Holodomor. <laughs> Interwar period in modern-day Western Ukraine After World War I, lands of what is today Western Ukraine were incorporated into newly restored Poland. Tadeusz Holoko died in Truskovic on August 29, 1931, one of the first victims of an assassination campaign carried out by militants of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists On 15 June 1934, Bronislaw Piraki was assassinated by a Ukrainian nationalist from the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists. World War II With the outbreak of war between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in 1941, many nationalists in Ukraine thought that they would have an opportunity to create an independent country once again. An entire Ukrainian volunteer division of the SS had been created. Many of the fighters who had originally looked to the Nazis as liberators, quickly became disillusioned and formed the Ukrainian Insurgent Army UPA Ukrainian, Ukrainska Povstanska Armia UPA which waged military campaign against Germans and later Soviet forces. The primary goal of OUN was the rebirth, of setting everything in order, the defense and the expansion of the Independent Council of Ukrainian National State. OUN also revived the sentiment that Ukraine is for Ukrainians. On June 30, 1941, the OUN, led by Stepan Bandera, declared an independent Ukrainian state. This was immediately acted upon by the Nazi army, and Bandera was arrested and imprisoned from 1941 to 1944. The UPA was a military group that took up arms first against the Nazis and later against the Soviets. During World War II, the UPA fought against the Polish, German and Soviet forces. After the Second World War, UPA took actions directed against Soviet rule within Ukraine. Many members of the UPA saw themselves as the armed wing of the OUN in its struggle for Ukrainian independence. There has been much debate as to the legitimacy of UPA as a political group. UPA maintains a prominent and symbolic role in Ukrainian history and the quest for Ukrainian independence. At the same time it was deemed an insurgent or terrorist group by Soviet historiography. Ukrainian Canadian historian Serhii Yekolchik writes that during 1943 and 1944 an estimated 35,000 Polish civilians and an unknown number of Ukrainian civilians in the Volhynia and Chelm regions fell victim to mutual ethnic cleansing by the UPA and Polish insurgents. Niall Ferguson writes that around 80,000 Poles were murdered then by Ukrainian nationalists. Norman Davies in his book Europe at War 1939-1945, No Simple Victory puts the number of murdered Polish civilians at between 200,000 and 500,000, while Timothy Snyder writes that Ukrainian nationalists killed between 40 to 60,000 Polish civilians in Volhynia in 1943. <laughs> Declaration of State Sovereignty 1991. 
The most celebrated event in modern Ukrainian nationalist history is the achievement of independence from the Soviet Union after its collapse in 1991. Ukrainian nationalism in present-day Ukraine Voters from Western Ukraine and Central Ukraine tend to vote for pro-Western and pro-European general liberal National Democrats with the Our Ukraine blocs and bloc Yulia Tymoshenko now as its frontrunners. UDAR replaced the Our Ukraine bloc in the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election. Our Ukraine, a major national democratic force in Ukrainian politics in the early 21st century met with total failure since the 2010 Ukrainian local elections. While in eastern Ukraine and southern Ukraine pro-Russian parties get the vote. Since the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election Fatherland and UDAR cooperate officially with all Ukrainian Union. Svoboda. Until the 2009 Ternopil Oblast local election Svoboda and other nationalist parties' role in Ukrainian politics had been extremely marginal. However, in the 2012 parliamentary elections Svoboda came in fourth with 10, 44 percent almost a fourteenfold of its votes compared with the 2007 parliamentary elections of the national votes and 38 out of 450 seats. Nationalism in politics From the 1998 parliamentary elections till the 2012 parliamentary elections no nationalist party obtained seats in the Verkhovna Rada Ukraine's parliament. In these elections nationalist right-wing parties obtained less than 1% of the votes, in the 1998 elections they obtained 3.26%. The nationalist party Svoboda had an electoral breakthrough with the 2009 Ternopil Oblast local election when they obtained 34.69% of the votes and 50 seats out of 120 in the Ternopil Oblast Council. This was the best result for a far-right party in Ukraine's history. In the previous 2006 Ternopil Oblast local election the party had obtained 4.2% of the votes and 4 seats. In the simultaneously held local elections for the Lviv Oblast Council it had obtained 5.62% of the votes and 10 seats and 6.69% of the votes and 9 seats in the Lviv City Council. In the 2010 Ukrainian local elections Svoboda achieved notable success in eastern Galicia. In the 2012 parliamentary elections Svoboda came in fourth with 10, 44% almost a fourteenfold of its votes compared with the 2007 parliamentary elections of the national votes and 38 out of 450 seats. Since the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election Batkivshina and UDAR cooperate officially with Svoboda, in the 2014 Ukrainian presidential elections and 2014 parliamentary elections, Svoboda candidates failed to meet the electoral threshold to win. On 19 November 2018 Svoboda and fellow Ukrainian nationalist political organizations Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists, Congress of Ukrainian Nationalists, Right Sector and C-14 endorsed Ruslan Koshalinsky candidacy in the 2019 Ukrainian presidential election. <laughs> Contemporary Russian-Ukrainian conflict The topic of Ukrainian nationalism and its alleged relationship to neo-Nazism came to the fore in polemics about the more radical elements involved in the Euromaidan protests and subsequent Ukrainian crisis from 2013 onward. Russian media has attempted to portray the Ukrainian party in the conflict as Nazi, while at the same time key ideologies in the pro-Russian side, such as the former national Bolshevik figure Alexander Dugin themselves claim intellectual influence from the likes of Heinrich Himmler of the Waffen-SS. The main Ukrainian organizations involved with a neo banderite legacy are Svoboda, Right Sector and Azov Battalion. In 1991 Svoboda was founded as the Social National Party of Ukraine. The party combined radical nationalism and alleged neo-Nazi features. It was renamed and rebranded 13 years later as All Ukrainian Association Svoboda in 2004 under Ole Tyanibok. Political scientists Oleksiy Heron and Alexander J. Modal contend that Svoboda is radical rather than fascist and they also argue that it has more similarities with far-right movements like the Tea Party than it has with either fascists or neo-Nazis. 
In 2005 Viktor Yushchenko appointed Volodymyr Vyatrovich head of the Ukrainian Security Service SBU archives. According to Professor Per Anders Rudling, this not only allowed Vyatrovich to sanitize ultra-nationalist history, but it also allowed him to officially promote its dissemination along with OUN B ideology which is based on ethnic purity coupled with anti-Russian, anti-Polish and anti-Semitic rhetoric. The extreme right wing now capitalizes on Yushchenkoist propaganda initiatives. This includes Yuri Mikhailichishin, an ideologue who proudly confesses that he is a part of the fascist tradition. The autonomous nationalists focus on recruiting young people, participating in violent actions, and advocating anti-bourgeoisism, anti-capitalism, anti-globalism, anti-democratism, anti-liberalism, anti-bureaucratism, anti-dogmatism. In 2009 Svoboda fetched 34,7% of the votes in the Ternopil Oblast local elections. Svoboda was part of a right-wing alliance of European national movements until it withdrew from the organization in 2014. Per Anders Rulig has suggested that Viktor Yanukovych has indirectly aided Svoboda by granting Svoboda representatives disproportionate attention in the media. After Yanukovych's ouster in February 2014, the interim Yatsenyuk government placed four Svoboda members in leading positions, Alexander Sitch as Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Ihor Tenyuk as Minister of Defense, lawyer Ihor Shveka as Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food and Andriy Moknik as Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources of Ukraine. However, the U.S. State Department has stated in a 5 March 2014 fact sheet that Far right wing ultranationalist groups, some of which were involved in open clashes with security forces during the Euromaidan protests, are not represented in the Rada. Andriy Beletsky, the head of the ultranationalist and neo Bandarite political groups Social National Assembly and Patriots of Ukraine, is commander of the Azov Battalion. In October 2016, Beletsky officially left the Ukrainian military because Ukrainian elected officials are barred from serving in the army, but he vowed to continue his military career without titles. Azov Battalion of the Ukrainian National Guard fighting pro Russian separatists in the war in Donbass. According to a report in the Daily Telegraph, some individual anonymous members of the battalion identified themselves as sympathetic to the Third Reich. Beletsky is a member of the Ukrainian parliament. In June 2015, Democratic Representative John Conyers and his Republican colleague Ted Yoho offered bipartisan amendments to block the U.S. military training of Ukraine's Azov Battalion. In the 2014 Ukrainian parliamentary election, the right wing parties Svoboda and Right Sector, representing ultranationalists who were involved in clashes with security forces during the Euromaidan protests, did not pass the 5% threshold, cumulatively receiving only eight seats in the 450 seat Ukrainian parliament less than 2% of all seats. Since 14 April 2016 the chairman of the Ukrainian parliament has been Andriy Paraby, the co-founder of the Social National Party of Ukraine. Paraby has had no affiliation with this party or with its successors since 2004. The radical nationalists group S14, whose members openly expressed neo-Nazi views, gained notoriety in 2018 for being involved in violent attacks on Romani camps. Soviet Union and Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism In Soviet ideology there exists the concept of Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism UBN Ukrainian Ukrainskij bourgeoisnij nationalism UBN This nationalism was presented as a form of an anti-socialist and counter-revolutionary bourgeois movement all counter-revolutionary activities were persecuted by the Article 58 of the 1922 Russian Criminal Code. The definition of Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was well put in the foreword of a Soviet book from the 1950s, Under Foreign Flags, by Volodymyr Byelyev. The book claimed that Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was invented by the archenemy of the Ukrainian people, the historian Mikhailo Ryshevsky, whom the author claimed to have been a German spy. Ryshevsky enjoyed great political and public popularity and respect, so the Soviet government resorted to negative public relations against him. These accusations were recently reiterated by the Doctor of Historical Sciences Vitaly Sarbe who was published by the Russian Information Agency, Rosbalt, February 2011. The book, Under Foreign Flags, gives the following definition of Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism. 
Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism is the ideology and politics of the Ukrainian bourgeoisie. Exploiting society, the social base of Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was a stratum made up of all urban and rural bourgeoisie starting from the big capitalists, owners of big industrial enterprise, and finishing with numerous layers of the bourgeois class under capitalism, Kirkel. The economical base for the growth of Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism in the epoch of imperialism is the same as for that of any nationality, that is, the increase of imperialist competition for sales markets and raw materials. Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was a cliché of Soviet phraseology such as proletarian internationalism, fraternity of peoples, agitprop, stakhanovite movement, enemy of the people, and numerous others. According to Soviet ideology Ukrainian bourgeois nationalism was a specific form of bourgeois nationalism recognizing the superiority of national interests over class interests see class in Marxist theory. The idea of bourgeois nationalism was required to keep consistency with the Bolsheviks' declaration of the rights of the peoples of Russia which set a wave of secession movements across the former Russian Empire. This concept of nationalism was also used to identify everyone who did not share the national policy principles of the Communist Party Bolsheviks, proletarian internationalism, and did not fit under the definition of bourgeois cosmopolitanism. In Soviet ideology, bourgeois cosmopolitanism was a negative phenomenon and opposite to the proclaimed fraternity of peoples. The term first appeared in the 1920s in the documents of the Communist Party and spread into Soviet journalism and science literature. It was needed as an ideological device. Similarly, Soviet historiography equated Ukrainian nationalism with fascism and with Nazism despite the fact that racism and cult of personality were extrinsic to Ukrainian nationalism, which was its distinction. <laughs> <laughs> Nationalist political parties Current All Ukrainian Union, Fatherland, 1999 present, Congress of Ukrainian Nationalists, 1992 present, National Corps, 2016 present, People's Front, 2014 present, People's Movement of Ukraine, 1990 present, Radical Party of Ole Lyashko, 2010 present. Ukrainian Republican Party 2006 present Right Sector 2013 present Svoboda 2004 present Ukrainian People's Party 2002 present UKROP 2015 present Topic <laughs> Defunct All Ukrainian Political Movement State Independence of Ukraine 1990 to 2003 Borotbists 1918 to 1920 Revolutionary Ukrainian Party 1900 to 1905 Social National Party of Ukraine 1991 to 2004 Ukrainian Radical Party 1890 to 1940 Topic See also Greater Ukraine Ukrainian National Revival Ukrainophilia Ukrainization Far-right politics in Ukraine Neo-Nazism in Ukraine Notes <laughs> <laughs>